Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be going over the best cards in Lightning Overdrive as it's coming out really soon in just about a week here for most of us here uh, for this set. And on top of that, the entire list got showed off a while ago and I want to give you guys the info on the best cards in here. So first off, I want to go ahead and go over like a general thing of like what's in this set, right? So Divine of Herald is like the go-to ace card in here. That's the card that you want to be pulling as it is confirmed for a secret rare. Now on top of that, there's also Z W support, there's the introduction of the Amazement archetype, there's a bunch of the new uh, Rose Dragon support, there's a few Bujin support cards, there's also more stuff for the S forces that archetype never really took off, and there's also a few uh, new Trap Tricks, Live Twins, and on top of that, there's a really cool card called Dark Honest, which it, it's kind of outdated and outclassed because Yu-Gi-Oh has gotten much faster, but Scrap Raptor is also another phenomenally good card. I will also go over some of the effects of these cards in a moment, but just like a brief little overview of what's to be expected over over here uh, in this. Um there's a bunch of the AI stuff, if any of you guys are interested in that, but the Amazement is like basically one of the newer archetypes that will be playable, and it's actually a pretty decent archetype. There's also a bunch of newer War Rock cards, but we've actually covered them. I'll pin the video down below if any of you guys haven't seen it. All the new War Rock stuff is still mediocre, and the archetype still desperately needs way more support to be considered a TCG exclusive that's going to be doing anything. And there's a bunch of other plant support, which kind of works well with the Rose Dragon stuff. But anyways, let's go and kick it off with some of the uh, cards. So this is hands down the best card. Card. Now, keep in mind right now, we are still in what's considered like the pre-release prices. So I will make a video going over all the money cards, but this video is basically going to be highlighting like the best cards out of it via the, their effects, not their price. But I, if you guys are new here and you do want to see that, make sure you guys subscribe with the bell notification on and you guys will see the video that will drop relatively soon that will go over basically the money cards out of the set. As right now with pre-release prices, if you guys don't know, normally Yu-Gi-Oh! pre-sale prices can go up and down really fast, short prints are a thing but most importantly the scrap raptor which it was kind of what the chase cards in here is actually going to be their common so uh starting off with the diviner of herald and like you know why it's good really quick um so it happens to be a fairy and a tuner and it has an insane effect it's just when it's normal or special you get to send a fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard usually it's the extra deck um the dry trons can make really great use out of that plus a lot of other archetypes that are ritual based can make really good use out of this effect as well um some fairy decks can maybe make use out of it, but I haven't really seen like counter fairies or any real fairy archetype do relatively well in the most recent um times in the competitive scene in Yu-Gi-Oh! Last time, I think the Fairy Tremetta was like, what is it? Uh, agents, right? Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, it has a pretty cool effect. You can use it in a lot of different things. It's just basically for the uh, dumping in the extra deck to go search out for whatever you want. It's a really good effect. Uh, next up, though, Scrap Raptor. This is, again, a card that a lot of people thought was going to be a secret rare. It is a Earth and a Dinosaur, and it's a Tuner, and it has a really good effect to go ahead and target out Monster Control. You get to pop it. You get an additional normal summon of a Scrap Monster. And if it's destroyed by a scrap card, you get to add a scrap factory or a non-tuner scrap monster from your deck to your hand. It facilitates a lot of really cool combos. And if you guys want to learn how to do some of the things with the new scrap raptor card, it's pretty good. I mean, you can make some pretty insane boards. Well, VFD is a little bit gone here. This was actually before, uh, obviously, the, the newer uh, list. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you can, you can make pretty good boards at the end of the day. And I think that a lot of people will be excited to uh, make use out of this. There's like Orcus variants. Uh, there's so many different uses out of this just because of the, it happens to be a dinosaur and a scrap and it's an earth and tuner. So you can do a lot of things with it. Next up though, this is another like really decent generic card. This is like basically coming out like right before the Droplet reprint as Droplet is going to be getting a reprint. But Lunar Eclipse is still a pretty good card. It lets you discard a card so you can set up your graveyard for future plays. And then you get to target two monsters up on the field and change them to face down defense. But basically, it's a one card. It's like Book of Moon, uh, like a, a buffed up version of Book of Moon, like a super Book of Moon, ultra Book of Moon. I don't know what you want to call it. But basically, um, it just gets rid of two monsters effects, you know, when you're flipping them face down. If you're playing things like dinosaurs, it could be excellent. But I feel like it's kind of outclassed by droplets. But remember, we're getting this before the droplet reprint. So therefore, I think some people will be excited to finally get their hands on this card. And it's pretty good. There's a really easy combo. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it down below as well. With the greater polymerization with like a hero variant deck, it's so easy. You 
you can OTK super, super, super fast with the Book of Lunar Eclipse. Plus, like, again, it just takes down effects. Now, this is um, a really interesting card, especially for archetypes that want to search out things. It's, a, it's another one of those cards where it's kind of conditional for some archetypes, but how it works is you can, um, during your opponent's main phase, if they add a card from the deck to their hand, which is like every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck, uh, you get to go ahead and immediately after that effect resolves, tribute some of this card, and if it's normal or special from the hand, you have your opponent banish all the cards from their top of the deck uh, face down equal to the number of cards in their hand, and then they shuffle their entire hand to the deck, and then um, they add the banished cards by this effect to their hand. So basically, you make your opponent search out their stuff, and then they lose out on their cards, basically swapping um, their hand and putting it back. So it can really disrupt certain plays that need a very specific card, and let's say there's only one copy of, and there's like multiple searchers, right? This could be good as a side deck card. It's kind of a pricey card right now, and that is just due to it being a, uh, where is it, the... Uh, uh, the resur resurgent, uh, oh, grand, grand radiance over here. If we go to grand, it's it's in about thirty dollars. It's kind of one of the more pricier cards in the set. I feel like it's kind of meh, but it's still considered a pretty decent card for some people if they want to side deck it. Again, certain things it could be all right. Now, uh, hopping into the Ar Arlecchino or Arlecchino as he's now called, this is basically one of the most important cards for a lot of different archetypes that are going to be splashing into the amazement uh, into them. Basically, it lets you banish any uh, number of uh, attraction traps in your graveyard and you target as many uh, cards as your opponent controls and then destroy them and then the trap card is activated you can special summon this card from the hand and so that's where it becomes more useful in other archetypes and if you put normal or special into monster you can target one of those opponent's monsters and equip that uh, opponent's monster with an attraction trap from your deck like if you're playing the attraction archetype you have to run triple copies of this. if you're going to splash this in your deck most of them are going to be playing three copies of it um it's just like one of the, like, the important cards for the newer archetype and then we have dry trying to move uh beta fafnir it's going to be usually usually used for dry trons surprise but uh, nonetheless it's another like decent card that's coming out over here there's not really what i would consider too many chase cards like the best cards in here i could sum it up in scrap raptor and diviner apparel for most people but there are other cards that i want to get into but yeah um this card I, I don't know if it's going to be able to maintain like a high price but it's still one of the better cards in this set so dark honest it's it only works with dark monsters but uh you can bounce it back to your hand. Not that you really need to do that too much, uh, but you can do it just like you would with normal Honest. And then during the damage step, if a dark monster battles as a quick effect, you can make that uh, mo opponent's monster lose attack equal uh, to its uh, uh, lose attack equal to its current attack until the end of this turn. So like it in a sense, it's okay. But like Honest is still considered way better because uh, the way that you can do a massive amount of damage with Honest, especially with cards that can attack multiple times, like Black Luster Soldier. I love that. Like Black Luster Soldier, Armory Arm, Honest. That was a, a cool combo that you can do. But this is like an outclass. Uh, Honest used to be super OP in Yu-Gi-Oh, but now it, no one really cares too much about that card. It's at three anyways. Um, this card, uh, what the heck did they change his name to? Uh, Ankama Fort? I don't know. Whatever. The new Pendulum, old guy, spellcaster looking guy that uh, is a level five so it has a really interesting effect this is going to be something that i think a lot of people will use in kind of weird obscure decks but it will definitely see play in fact i've seen a lot of people play it when it first got announced i haven't seen it in a while but pendulum effect you have no cards in your extract or all cards in your extract are um oh yeah it was um Flight. that was his name this is a, his original name so even though it says something different they haven't changed it on the uh page but yeah this is the same that's what his name used to be and I'm assuming that this is also going to be changing it to whatever his name is. But anyways, you can destroy his card and draw a card. So basically, it's like it's like just cycling through one card. You don't go plus with it unless you need the pendulum card over there. But um, yeah, you just destroy it and then you draw a card and your opponent doesn't gain a thousand life points. So like in one sense, it's like better than upstart for some archetypes. But it also has a pretty okay monster effect. So it cannot be normal summon or set. It must be special from your uh, face up extra deck while you have no cards in your extra deck other than Uncamel Flight, which is again, the same name as Uncamel Unc Flight. Um, you can only special summon count that once per turn this way. If this card is in the monster zone, would leave the field, you banish it instead. So, like, it's really good for, I mean, I was, I've seen people try it in Monarchs and stuff. There's a lot of different archetypes that can make use out of it, but it's one of those cards I think is just one of the better cards in the set. Next up, we have the Ruddy Rose Dragon, which was the Bloody Rose, or Blood Rose Dragon is his original name. They changed it over here, but this card's pretty good as well. We actually did drop a video going over how to make, like, triple synchro boss monsters in one turn. I would not recommend someone to build a rose 
Ghost Dragon archetype if you want to take the game seriously and win like your duels. You're better off making a Synchro deck that can go Crystal Wing and then Ruddy Rose or Bloody Rose and then another like boss monster. That's going to give you a better chance at being successful rather than making like a, a Rose Dragon archetype. Garden Rose Floor is another really great card. It's just a plant synchro tuner that happens to have the quick effect during your opponent's main phase or once per chain. You can synchro summon using this card you control. So if you guys remember Form of Synchro, that's a cool card. There's another, another just cool card for that archetype, but it is plant and it does have some really good uh, synergy with the newer plant stuff. So I like it for that. Next up, we have Bell and Gunter the Resurgent. This is another card, I believe this was, uh, yeah, it was like another like $30 card. You can see there's some that are, it's a market price, like 50 um, for, uh, this guy over here but he's a really good effect for like any plant archetype or syn synchro decks can use plants but um plant synchro is just not the, as popular as it used to be a long time ago but during the main phase as a quick effect you're targeting effect monster your opponent controls and you take damage you kill that monster attack and then you get to bounce that back and then you can banish two more link monsters who's equals four and you can special summon it uh back but then it gets banished the next time but like it's a really good card though overall for uh again like it's supposed to i think it's supposed to be for like the sunvine archetype but it's like a really good card just in general for like the the rose dragon like plant synchro if you want to build that there's also some other weird interesting cards that like I, I wanted to go ahead and give them a shout out here because I, I like obscure cards but you can only activate one of them uh this is hidden springs of the far east it makes it so the player that normal or special summons uh can't be negated this is you have to activate this during main phase two it's more for cheese troll archetypes but it's been a while since we've seen some of those decks but this can make some some of those things emerge so the player's normals and special summons cannot be negated. The activation of that player's cards and effects that include the effect that special summon monsters cannot be negated. That player's uh, opponent cannot target that player's spell set spells and traps cards with effects. Also, they can't be destroyed by that player's opponent's card effects. This is more relevant for things um, that would be like like there's variants of Moral Magical Library, Treasure Pander that like special summon with like the Exodia. If any of you guys have seen this, this would be like something that helps out more of those cheesy archetypes. But I would still consider one of like the better cards in the set. Also, there's for I don't know what reason they're like you know what Yu-Gi-Oh players want they want the Sphinx. I wanted to give this card a shout out because Sphinx control was a real thing like it, it never was what i would consider as tier but it shuffles all monsters your opponent controls into the deck when it gets flip summon um i haven't really seen it see play but i just thought it was like a cool throwback to again uh, like the old school Yu-Gi-Oh card and then there's the supreme sovereign serpent of uh gold uh gonda this could be a card that some people use it really helps the spriggan archetype that's what it's basically used for um but if it's in your hand or graveyard and um there's a face-up card in the field, in your field zone. You can just special summon it, and it potentially has 3,000 attack, but it can be used. I've seen other people use this in other archetypes just for, like, a free summon of an 8 that you can just discard or throw into the grave. It also happens to be a reptile, so it can't work with other archetypes, as I've seen people mixing them with the new snake stuff. It's an interesting card, and I just think it's it's just a card that I wanted to go ahead and mention. If you guys do want to check out the full list, I'll link it down below, but those are the cards that I found to be interesting. If you guys felt like I missed out on anything that was really good, let me know down below but pretty much i would say these are the chase cards and this card is going to be like it's like 50 cents right now so it's basically just this card the rest of the stuff i would say is probably going to go down in price i mean you know the 30 dollar cards again with the sneak peek prices or pre pre-release prices uh usually they're a little bit higher than what i would say this card is good though this actually no i'll consider this kind of the chase card here but again scrap raptor if this was a secret rare the set i think would have been a little bit better for people that are looking to invest into but that's at least my personal opinion you guys can let me know yours down below but thanks for tuning in guys if you enjoyed the video drop a like on it and i will update you guys again with that future list of like the best money cards as again i think with going over pre-release prices can be kind of rough but catch you guys in the next one if you want to see that hit subscribe turn on that bell and you'll see it very soon but take care i'll see you guys in the next vid peace